Jane Bigham. China successfully launched the Mengtian Space Lab module, taking construction of the country's Tiangong Space Station into the final stage. Mengtian will soon join the two-module combination, already about 400 kilometers above Earth. It's the last building block and allow Tiangong to form a T-shaped structure. Sun Ye reports from Beijing. But the launch was declared success for the Mengtian Space Lab module. That means China's heaviest spacecraft it has ever built has successfully launched. And Mengtian is going to arrive at China Space Station assembly later. The journey, the work has only just started because we have yet to have a Mengtian rendezvous and dock with the existing China Space Station assembly, which is in an L shape right now and ready to receive it. And that rendezvous and docking process compared with our previous ones is going to be a little bit more, even more trickier for the simple reason that we have more spacecraft there and there are more angles that we need to maneuver. And then we also have yet to have the Mengtian Space Lab module really merge with the existing assembly in all of its systems. And of course, we are still waiting for our Tycoon to get into Mengtian to give us the first real glimpse of it. The General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam's Central Committee is visiting China. This is the first foreign visit by Nguyen Phu Trong since the outbreak of the coronavirus. Zhou Yang reports from Hanoi. It's the first official visit of Nguyen Phu Trong after the 13th National Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam. And Phu Trong is the first senior foreign leader to visit China after the 20th CPC National Congress. Green Express quoted Phu Trong as saying that he highly values Xi Jinping's contribution to china vietnam relations. He expressed his willingness to take the two countries' relations to new heights based on mutual interest and peace, ability, cooperation, and development. China's made clear that the United States should refrain from containing China's development and avoid creating new barriers in bilateral ties. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi has spoken with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Wang said that returning the China-U.S. relationship to a path of stable development is not only in the two countries' interests, but is also the common aspiration of the international community. Blinken said the U.S. is ready to maintain communication and cooperation with China while developing their future relations. The two sides also touched on Ukraine, with the Chinese foreign minister calling on parties to step up diplomatic efforts to avoid escalation of the situation. Police in South Korea are analyzing witness accounts and security camera footage to determine the cause of the deadly Halloween stampede in Seoul. The tragedy has left at least 154 people dead and around 150 others injured. The National Office of Investigation says they interviewed 44 eyewitnesses on Sunday. They're looking into allegations that some people pushed others in the crowd, causing the stampede. So far, officials say they've not found any acts that would justify criminal charges. South Korea and the United States have kicked off large-scale joint air drills. The exercises involve around 240 warplanes. The combined air forces will make around 1,600 sorties to review the Korean Air and Space Operations Center's capabilities to command the combined forces. Over 130 people are dead after a pedestrian bridge over a river in the western Indian state of Gujarat collapsed, plunging hundreds of people into the water. Authorities said more than 150 people were on the suspension bridge over the Machu River at the time of the collapse. Search and rescue operations are underway. Radhika Bajaj reports from Mumbai. This uh, bridge was actually built way back in 1879 and uh, since then, of course, it's got several upgrades. Uh, but what is certainly alarming is that this uh, bridge had been closed off for seven months uh, and was uh, reopened just uh, four days ago, uh, keeping in mind that India has been in the midst of a festive season. Uh, Sunday evening, uh, we believe there were 400 people uh, on this bridge. Uh, the capacity is supposed to be only 100 people at a time, uh, which is why... Uh, uh, this uh, incident is coming, uh, has come in as a horrible shock uh, and uh, through the night uh, we have uh, seen uh, rescue work continuing uh, and uh, since the break of dawn we believe uh, the death toll now is at 132. 177 people have been uh, pulled out alive uh, from the waters of uh, the Matu River. And that's the news. I'm Shane Begum.